everybody. This is Mike from the One Stop Co-op Shop, and we're diving deep into John Company 2nd Edition today. Specifically, we'll be looking at the Sola Atoma, designed by Ricky Royal from Box of Delights. And disclaimer that World of Geek Games did send us a review copy of this. And if you like the content at the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month. You can also watch our streaming channel for even more great content, listen to our podcast with one to two episodes per week, or join the conversation on our Discord. So I'll try to give a quick overview of John Company. It's a pretty complex game, and this is only my third time playing, so uh, <laughs> I fully expect to make some rules errors. Bear with me. But the basic idea is that each of the players is a family involved in the British East India Company, uh, trying to exploit and take advantage of India to make money for Britain. And the game progresses through several years where the players jockey for different positions in charge of the company, a lot money to those positions, and they'll try to perform actions. The majority of them focused on conquering areas of India or fulfilling uh, shipping orders through those areas. And the company will either survive to the end of the scenario, we're doing the uh, basic 1710 scenario, or not. But either way, players will earn individual victory points and also get victory points uh, from power based on how the company does at the end. And whoever has the most victory points when the company fails or at the end of five rounds will be the winner. There's a lot of other core ideas. Each person has these uh, little members of their family. And they'll be filling roles in the company or having uh, officerships in the military branch or like being over to fill orders and write for them in India itself. And there is dice rolling in the game. A ton of the actions in the game will ask you to roll the dice on a one or two. You're successful on a three or four. You don't suffer any like major consequences on a five or six. You have a catastrophic failure and uh, you roll usually more than one die and you take the lowest. So like that would be a success. We would ignore the five and the six. Just having at least one, one or two is a success. There's also a storm die that can mess with your ships, random events that uh, take place in India, like people invading each other or kicking you out or foreign invaders coming in. And you have a prime minister with a crazy arm uh, leading votes in these voting cards that change up the game. Yeah, there, there's a lot going on. Not the least of which is this crown handbook, which walks you through each phase and has you have these little cubes, favor cubes that you can either gain for helping out the crown, the AI, or that you can lose to make the crown do something. That's how they kind of uh, model negotiation in the game. A very clever concept. But I mean, just look at this. Look at these pages of just Automa rules. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> the uh, final video will probably be about half as long as Mike just digging through rule books will be if you watched all the footage. Uh, but let's get into it and see what happens. So the game starts out with us uh, dividing up these cards between the players. The Atoma sort of counts as like two players here because they're going to start with eight of the 12 cards and I'm going to get four. You can do it randomly if you want a bigger challenge, but I'm going to look at three cards at a time. This is like the standard way to play. Uh, keep one for myself and give two to the Atoma. And each one gives you some placements or like items for your uh, family and also a certain amount of money. So to explain these, uh, this would give me a family member in command of the army of Bombay and also a writer in Bombay, which are the people used to uh, fulfill orders in India and get you money by doing so. And also for uh, money to start quite a bit. I can also be in charge of military affairs. They move units around the map and also decide where to promote officers to. I would also have a shipyard and a ship in East India that would uh, get me free votes and money every round and a little bit of money. Or I could be the president of Bengal, one of the three main areas that you have uh, some influence over in the game. So I'd be able to kind of control things there, including influencing some military operations. And I could have one family member in the court acting as a company share and helping to vote for the next chairman. Lots of cool stuff. Between those, I mean, huh. military affairs, I don't think I really need, although it is nice to have the shipyard. But having both a writer and a commander, this one gets me two people on the board, basically. this These ones only get me one. And especially early on, you can get a lot of uh, nice prestige from being a commander and helping to uh, conquer parts of India. So yeah, all right, I'm going to go for the commander and the writer, get the most money. But that means the AI will start out as the president of Bengal and military affairs. So two big positions right off the bat. All right, for round two, who a big one. This would give me control of like the company finances and kind of like just the top power, uh, the chairman and also a company share. So I would really like have a lot of control uh, in the court of directors. Only one money or president Madras and also in the company and one money. So... That's like more India control or more like direct company control. Ooh, or I can be the prime minister, which would uh, control the voting at the end of each round and get a random blackmail card. Those tend to give you a power, which might uh, give you victory points at the end of the game if you have the most. Uh, I don't really care about the prime minister too much. I'm kind of between these two. So the chairman themselves count as somebody in the court of directors, which means uh, we would be tied like two to two if I let them get the presidency. Yeah, I think I'm going to be the chairman. I want to be in charge, right? 
All right, two more rounds of this. Another ship. I should probably get at least one of those and four money. Or presidency, gosh. Right now, uh, they have all the presidencies. Ooh, and I already have the commander of Bombay and a writer in Bombay, so I could really like just push Bombay as a major place and make a lot of money. Or I could have the commander and a writer in Madras, which would be opposed by them having the president, but they usually can't shut me out entirely, and I'm the chairman, so I can give some money there too. Although if I get the presidency, I'll really lock down the court of directors. And these people are worth victory points at the end of the game. Uh, if the company survives, if it doesn't, they're negative victory points. So, eh, you know, you can sometimes sort of play for the company to go down. Uh, yeah, I like the idea of being the president of Bombay, but I really want a ship. Uh, whatever. So I'm going to give them a ton of money. Seven plus the ship will earn them even more, or the shipyard, I should say. And they're also uh, very dominant in Madras. So I'll just maybe try to starve them out of any money. Ha 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 ha. Manager of ships would let me move ships around and set myself up, like certain areas up for trade. Which if I want to like make Bombay kind of the power here could be pretty important. Uh, but then there's director of trade that gets to do like special things. can open up trade to China. Oh, and I would also get the ship I was looking for. Otherwise, they have all three ships. Or I can be the commander of the Bengal army, which would kind of uh, split control there since they have the presidency there and a writer in Bengal and even more money. Uh, but I could just like give favors to the manager of shipping to move ships where I want. Oh, that would also be another person in the court, which is important because uh, whoever gets that would have three to two. If my chairman ever has to retire, then uh, the majority would get to select who the next chairman is. Uh, but I really want the ship. Oh my gosh, but director of trade I don't care as much about. You know what? I want to have the court control. So I'm going to get manager of shipping, one more court, and two money. Can you give them commander of the Army of Bengal and director of trade and the last ship? All right. And with all of that set up, uh, they're definitely in control of a lot of positions, uh, but hopefully I'll still be okay. I'll get into the first actual year and I'll sort of uh, explain things as best I can as we go. So this pawn sort of goes around and uh, reminds you what's next. London season, you skip in the first year. But basically in London season, you roll for each of uh, the positions you have and you can either put fatigue on them, making them closer to retirement, or if you roll badly, they can retire. And then you'll have to uh, select somebody new for that position. But when you get to retire, you can spend money, why it's very important to have a nice uh, personal treasury to put them up in a nice house, earning yourself permanent victory points. Although you have to pay money every turn, you might get taxed based on the number of windows. And whoever spends the most money retiring gets to take one of these London cards, but we're going to ignore all of that for now and jump right into the family phase. So for a player family phase, you have six action options and you have this little uh, clear stone you put on. Uh, if you pick one and then you do the action once, but then in the next year's family phase, if you leave it where it is, you get to do the action twice. And some votes will also open up like free actions to give you extra options. And to go over the actions briefly, you can enlist a writer. They go into the right side of the box for the presidencies of each of the three main regions in India. And they're placed on the little spaces here, which are order spaces. Uh, they earn their family money as they're used. And then also if the president ever goes away, they'll be one of the ones who could be recruited into that spot. Another option is to enlist officers. Whoever controls military affairs is going to send them as officers into one of the three armies, and they can be used to uh, stage attacks in India and can also earn your family money, although they can also be killed in combat. So that's not great. You can also seek a share, putting a person on one of these spaces and paying the amount. And then if the company has debt, which is the red pawn all the way at the top there, it doesn't start out with any, then uh, you'll get rid of debt uh, to move them into the court to give yourself, to, again, potentially more uh, votes for chairman and more victory points if the company survives to the end of the game. And further to the right as preference, so if you don't pay very much, there's less chance you'll actually get in. You can buy a shipyard. We already saw the uh, AI getting a bunch of these. It costs you two money. Uh, you put the ship on here at first because it's not fitted yet. But then the master of shipping, hey, that's me, can pay money to send your ship into one of the uh, areas around India. And after you've done that, you get one money each round for your shipyard. And also having shipyards gives you a vote when uh, the votes come up at the end of the turn. Speaking of things to buy, you can buy a workshop for $5. It also gets you one money every turn. It gives you two votes. And if the company fails, it gets you a victory point. It's worth uh, no victory points, though, if the company survives. And your last buying option, you can buy a luxury, which is worth two victory points. But it also has a window, which will be taxed often during the voting phase. I know there's a lot going on, but it'll make sense hopefully as things go along. And you'll see all these have uh, icons that match these things here. And this has a one next to it, and this has a two. Basically, during the voting phase, depending on how the vote goes, these will change positions. And what this means is for each of the cards with the matching icon, they give you that much power. And other things give you power, like successful attacks and successfully passing votes and being the prime minister and other stuff. And whoever has the most power gets a bunch of victory points, uh, more if the company survives longer. 
But then again, other victory points can come from things like people in the court and the properties you've retired to. Mike, you're explaining too much. Just shut up and play the game. Okay, I will. Uh, I'm going to buy a shipyard because I don't want them to have all the ships and I'm in control of where it goes if I buy it. So it's going to cost me two for my personal treasury. We'll put it there for now. Just to show the coins that uh, these like sort of bronzish ones are one. The gray silver ones are twos. The golds, which only the AI has right now, are fives. And there's also a bigger 10 we don't have any of. And personal wealth does not by itself get you power or victory points. But as I said, you can spend money to retire people to places with more victory points. And you can buy things to get you power. You know, it's all worth it. All right, now we get to the crown, the AI. And they have uh, what's called a climate. At the start of the game, you flip over the top card of their deck. And kind of like Pax Pamir, it's sort of like a back of the uh, deck combined with the top discard. Kind of makes choices for the game. But it also determines their climate. Uh, so at the start of the game, you flip one. It says if there are zero to five fitted ships, there are three, one in each of the seas. Then they're on the little lion one. And this is going to modify some of their behaviors, although they'll flip another card and have a potentially new climate uh, after I'm done being the chairman and distributing money. But they get to do two family actions based on where they are. And for the lion, it's going to be buying a shipyard. Well, wow, lots of ships and uh, putting somebody in the officer training. So they do have to pay two for the ship, just like I did. And here's an officer in waiting in military affairs. And the AI also sometimes gets to place free writers in the presidencies if there's a bunch of uh, vacancies in positions from people uh, getting retired during attrition and such. But that doesn't apply at the start of the game. Next, we go to the firms phase, but you skip that if you're not playing with deregulation, which you don't in the basic scenario. I haven't tried it yet. Then you go into hiring, but you can also skip that at the beginning of the game because that only applies if positions are empty and then you like get to uh, kind of fight over who's going to get to take that spot. So right now everything is filled, so we don't have to worry about it. So now we're going to progress through each of the roles, and their card has kind of a summary. None of them is too complicated by itself, but, you know, tying it in with, like, the AI book and all that stuff can get a little bit complicated. Well, let's start with the chairman. I'm going to get to seek debt up to three times and more if I get approval of the court, which I have the majority in, so I could automatically do. The company currently has a balance of five money, and I'm going to spread that out among these little boxes and basically give funds for people to do their jobs. And if I want to have more than five, I can increase debt and I'll get five more money for each I do. But debt is going to be an ongoing drain on the company's finances at the end of every round. So you don't want to do too much debt if you can. Although having debt in the company opens up the possibility of seeking shares, putting your people here and then getting them into the court and that'll clear away the debt. So uh, yeah. Now something I only mentioned briefly are these promise cubes, like favors you can kind of give. Basically, you give the AI something and they'll help you out when it's their turn. And then uh, they give you stuff when you help them out. But if you're the chairman like I am, you always give them one when the chairman acts because they're just mad that you're in charge. Now, big thing is I can get some promise cubes from them if I uh, give money, enough money to one of their offices. So right now with them being aligned, if I give at least four, is that pounds? I think it's pounds <laughs> to an office they're in charge of, I'll get a promise cube. So, for example, if I uh, gave four of the funds from the company into uh, the director of trade, which they're in charge of, they would give me a cube. So before I decide how much debt to take, let's see what I want to do. Okay, so manager of shipping, I'm going to want to at least fit my own ship, which is three, and all the boxes start with three money. And I think that's actually enough. I don't really want to uh, fit the AI's ship because <laughs> I can just move the ships that are near their presidencies to Bombay and then uh, take advantage of all the shipping for myself. Mwahaha. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's okay where it is. Director of trade, I also don't really want them to have any more uh, except for opening up like a trade to China and also uh, opening up closed uh, routes to allow more trade to happen, which actually I might want to do in Bombay. Um, I don't necessarily need them. Now, presidency of Bombay, heck yes. I want like a bunch of money. I'm going to want money to do a military invasion into Bombay and set up a governorship there. Basically, all these little uh, building things with domes on them represent uh, autonomous or like empire control within India. But if I can take it over, then I get to put like a little governor thing here. And then we're in control. It opens up a new position for somebody to have and uh, lets you like build ships more quickly here, get more funds here. Just basically uh, take advantage of the people in a terrible way. Darn you, East India Company. But now do I want to give money to the presidency of Madras in Bengal? I mean, I'm a little bit torn because if I don't at least get the company some money and keep their coffers kind of full from trade, then they're going to fail. And all these people in the court are going to be negative victory points for me. And I'm probably going to lose the game. All right. So you know what? I'm going to do one debt, get us up to 10 money to distribute. But I think I'll stop there and be a little bit tight fisted this round. I'm going to give six to myself in Bombay of the 10. You do have to spend all of it. So you can't keep anything in the coffers. And then for the other four, I do want to get like one cube. What do I want more? Uh, Bengal is better for them to conquer. So I kind of, well, I guess it's also worth more money for us. 
So sure, let's give it to uh, Bengal, and that'll certainly benefit them. Because I gave one of their positions at least four, I'm getting a promise cube, so I'm back to six to use later. And during the chairman role, I'm going to reveal and maybe change their climate. Presidencies with control of a region. That's zero right now. We haven't taken over any of India, so they're going to be on the peacock climate right now. And the rest of the card, by the way, is used to like break ties when they're picking regions and doing that kind of stuff or like picking cards. We're not going to use any of that right now. All right, there we go, Chairman. That was uh, one of the more complicated ones. Let's go to trade. This will be quick. So trade has three money to play with. And they can spend that money to first take special envoy actions. Um, they basically roll one die for each money they spend. And remember, they're going for ones and twos to succeed. And if they succeed, they can open up orders. A lot of India starts closed to business, so we can't go into them. Like if we wanted to trade from Madras, you always start on like this uh, home area here that's in dark bold. So we couldn't trade anywhere except that single space right now. But if they opened it up, we could trade into there and there and there. You can also open up places, though, by invading them. Hey, uh, that works, too. Uh, they can also open up trade with China, which creates another role. And you like can send ships there. And if you uh, have crates controlled on India, you can make a lot of money. Oh, I'm so dumb. I forgot the manager of shipping just opens up new ships. The director of trade is one who moves ships around and writers. Uh, they can make two transfers. Darn it. Yes, yeah, so they're going to try to steal my ships. I probably have to give up promises just to stop them from doing it. And let's see. They will take an action if they have exactly three money. And they're going to try to open up the northernmost closed order in the first priority region from their AI card. Which currently is Bengal, although I wish it could be Bombay. I could spend a promise to make it Bombay. Well, then I'm going to be using promises to do a bunch of other stuff. Or, you know, even better than Bombay, what if I... Yeah, because I'll, I'll open up Bombay if I invade there. If I open up Punjab, um, that will give us a seven money region to trade into. Oof. Yeah, I'm going to say, never mind, do it in Punjab instead. Take a promise cube. And they're spending three, they said, for three dice. Now, if they succeed, it's great because that's uh, the region I want. If they calamitously fail and get all sixes like are on my hand randomly right now, then their person will leave being the director of trade. That's also awesome. Here we go. Nope, they did succeed. So this closed order is now open. And if I can get like a big trade action going from Bombay uh, to Punjab, oh, that'd be so much money. And right now they're going to do their two transfers. And yes, you can see it's a lot. So first they want to transfer a ship from a presidency with the fewest crown riders to the presidency with the most crown riders, which would be stealing my ship as we expected. Yeah, I feel so dumb now for having picked the wrong position because I think it was between director of trade and manager of shipping. Huh? So yeah, first they'd want to steal uh, the ship outside of Bombay and send it over to one of their places. And then they mess around with writers, but pfft, oh, that's such a dumb idea, but I think I'm going to do it. Yeah, actually, you know what, darn it, let's rewind a little bit because I just feel dumb getting things wrong. So let's say that I'm the director of trade, they're the manager of shipping. What was the difference? Oh, so they're going to have one person in the court. Oh, but I'll have a boat. That's cool. And I'll have one less money and they'll have one more. Okay. Which means that I have my uh, one cube back because I would have chosen to uh, get rid of the thing in Punjab on my own. Now, moving ships and riders. I mean, oh my gosh. Can I do this? Are they going to get mad at me? <laughs> do I lose promise for doing that? No, it doesn't seem like it. So yeah, I'll just uh, make Bombay the place to be. All right, but they'll get their revenge right now with the manager of shipping. They have three money like everybody else. And they must spend all but at max two of it. Uh, for every three they spend, they can get a player ship. It's on a shipyard fitted. So the shipyard will start earning money and it'll be on the oceans. They can also get a temporary ship for just one round for two, or they can get a permanent company ship for five, but all player ships have to be fitted first. And let's see, I can give them a promise to fit my ship instead of their own. Well, that seems pretty good. Oh, but then I would have to give them another promise to put it in my season. Well, you know what? I'll have them fit my ship, but they can put it wherever they want. I don't really care. I just want to get the money for it. So one promise to them, fit my ship. So it comes off the shipyard. And by the way, how you know uh, which ship belongs to which player is because, look, it's got the word fortitude, the name fortitude there. And again, I'm going to start getting one money every round for that. And their priority with their current climate is to go to a crown presidency sea zone. And uh, Bengal is their tiebreaker currently, which is fine. I do want them to make money over there for the company so we don't fold. All right, next is military affairs, which they're also in control of. They can transfer up to two officers or regiments which are these square military units. They never die, but they can be in different army spots. And then they have to assign all the officers in training to one of the armies. And if there are any commanders out, they appoint new commanders if they've uh, died in battle or whatever. Ooh, but look at this. The military is actually with me here. With the line, it says they will transfer there's their priority with the army of presidency with the fewest ships to the army of the presidency with the most ships. So this is fan friggin tastic because that means both their transfers... Uh, let's see, fewest ships would be Madras has no ships right now, and that'll go to Bombay. Thanks for helping out the cause. And I think this is the new fewest, so I think they're going to send in that as well. But now they can't attack Bengal, which I kind of wanted them to. But then they're going to assign their one officer, and uh, the first tiebreaker with their current climate is a crown presidency, and then the one with the most ships. So it's going to go into Bengal. So they have at least one fighting unit here, and they can spend money to uh, 
hire temporarily more from here and give themselves a chance to conquer there. Speaking of conquer, let me show you how the presidencies work and the armies work, uh, the commanders. Once you've got this, you've basically seen all the main actions until governors come into play. So a president decides the order of operations. If there's a governor and if there's a commander, they decide which of them goes first or second, and they can also trade once per turn. Here, I'll have a better, more interesting trade options if I attack first. So let's show you how that works. Because yeah, I mean, I just got so many uh, army people here, I might as well use them. So the commander of an army can do as many deployments as they want, but first they decide if they want to buy any of these local support units. The cost to do so is at the bottom, in this case, five pounds from uh, the presidency's budget. So the army uses the presidency and they have to actually ask the president. So here it doesn't matter because I am the commander of the army and I'm also the president of Bombay. So of course I would say yes, but like if I had a commander in Madras, then I'd have to like ask Yellow for their permission and probably give them some cubes. But yeah, if you pay for the local support, it goes up here and all these things are moved to the bottom when you want to attack with them. Each regiment will give you one die in a fight. The, these local allies will give you the amount indicated, so in this case, three dice. And you have to attack out from your starting place. So first, we would have to conquer Bombay. Once we had a governorship in Bombay, we could attack any of the ones that we're connected to. But these uh, units are exhausted for the rest of the round, which means also they can't defend because sometimes uh, events will have people come in and attack you. And you roll a number of dice equal to the number of units you use, but you subtract the number of levels of the defense place. This is a one. This place is a zero, but it's got a flag, which means it's under this like kind of communal empire. So they add all their strengths together. So that's a two level plus a one level plus a zero, a three strength if we attacked any of them. Although this little elephant shows that uh, this region's probably about to uh, rebel against Delhi and kick them out. But anyway, I'm kind of over explaining it again. Uh, key thing is I've got three units. The commanders can fight themselves. Uh, so three minus one would be two dice. I don't love those odds. So let's uh, hire the Sikhs for three. And again, that's coming from the presidency budget. And let's go and attack with all of them, unless you think that you're about to be invaded, which uh, actually could happen. But uh, let's just take a chance. <laughs> let's go ahead. So that's one, two, three, four, five minus one rolling four dice. And you can make as many deployments as you want, as long as you still have units. So I could have like attacked with less and then gone somewhere else. But let's see what happens. Beautiful. We succeeded with at least one, one or two. So a bunch of stuff happens when you succeed. Uh, first of all, any closed places are gone. If there was any unrest here, uh, which of these little cubes make uh, they help anybody attacking you here or rebelling here have an easier time, those would go away. And that means you can, by the way, attack a place you already own, basically like putting down any insurrections there. We also remove all the people here. And we're going to put a governorship, which looks like this. And that'll be a spot to actually put the person who becomes the governor. And then we get money to pay out to the people who fought. So the first time a place is invaded, you get this reward. So that's four for loot. But then it gets flipped over and becomes this little thing to show that uh, Bombay has the governorship of Bombay. And then you get four more for each level of the place you conquered. So that's going to be eight. And what we do is we divide it up among the people who fought and the commander. We start with the commander. So that's one of the eight. And then two, three, four, five just goes to the bank. You have to pay off the locals as well. And then you wrap back around if there's money left. So six to me. Seven, eight, and we're done. So I'm getting two money, and that's it. All the rest uh, got spent on the people that fought. Although if I had officers in there, like uh, the one in the Army of Bengal, they would also earn money and earn their peace. So like if they attacked with the Army of Bengal right now with these two and maybe some local allies, they would get a ton of money from the prize. But yeah, two total for me from that conquest. We also get a trophy token for each tower we defeated. These are, again, uh, added to your power to get that victory point prize at the end of the game. And if we had any officers fighting, we would roll a die for each one, and on a six, they would be killed uh, and go back to your supply. But here, we only fought with a unit, so that doesn't matter. All right, we could attack again, but clearly we've got no armies to do so. So it goes back to the president, and they can now do one trade action. Remember, I could have chosen to do this before the deployment. I can do whatever order I want. So the trade action works is I pay one dollar from the presidency for each die I want to roll, and I declare how many regions I'm going into. You have to always pick your home region first, and region, by the way, is like this big area. And you're going to be able to go into as many spots up to the number of ships you have in the matching sea. So I can go into three and you go like in a line. You can't cross over closed ones. So with three here, clearly the best I can do is four, then three, then seven into Punjab. But that would be a second region. So I'd have to subtract one die from whatever I go for. And I really don't want to fail. So I'm going to go ahead and spend uh, five money from the presidency, just leaving one there. Minus one die, so I'll get four, and if I get a success, I can trade successfully. And God, let's hope I do. I think with four, it's like an 80% chance of success. Okay, good, we got it. 
And just to say again, if the lowest result was a three or four, then you just fail. And you can generally try again, but you lose all the money you spent. So that would not be great here since we'd be broke. But if you get a five or a six, it's a catastrophic failure. You get kicked off the job, like your person is removed and that spot will be filled again um, during the next hiring phase. And other bad things can happen, like losing trophies, embarrassing yourself, just, yeah, terribleness. All right, so starting with our dark bordered place, we can trade uh, up to three spots. And you can put writers into spaces first, which is going to get us extra money. So that's four. Any additional spaces beyond that, you just put like a little filled token there. And that's not our money. That's the company's money, but it does need it to keep on running. So there we go. But players get money too for each filled order. The president gets one money. So that's going to be three. And then for each writer, the matching player gets one. So that's going to be four money to me. Thank you so much. And that's about it. Uh, next turn, there will be a governor there. Their turn's pretty quick. They just basically can roll some dice and get some bonuses. But if they fail, they cause unrest as they govern poorly. But let's go ahead and go to the presidency of Madras with their three money and to see what they want to do. Um, AI presidents always do governor first, then commanders, then trade. And let's see. First, they're going to see if they want to hire any local alliances. For Peacock, it says if the Crown's army strength is two or more, they will attempt to purchase the most expensive local alliance. They need to like know they already have enough troops to make it worth it. Currently, Madras has zero uh, army units, no regiments, no officers. So they ain't buying anything. And it could like give favors to force them to, but I don't really want them to either. And then they have a little uh, chart saying how many dice they have to get to minimum to trade. For Peacock, it's six. Jeez. But it doesn't matter because there are zero ships outside of Madras. So, yeah, what a, they're just doing nothing. Sorry, y'all. But Bengal should be a different story, maybe. They're still not going to get any local alliances or invade since they only have uh, one army unit there, not two strength. But they do have at least six money. Oh, my God, they're just going to waste all our money, I just realized. Because <laughs> what it says is they need at least six for the Peacock. And then if there are funds remaining, they'll spend up to an extra three to get even more dice. They're going to have seven dice to fill their order. Uh, you're spending seven money to get six, y'all. What are you doing? And they only have one ship, so they can only trade in their starting spot here. That's where I got the six number. Uh, notice if it doesn't matter if they have the governorship or not, they can still trade there. They're not going to any other regions, so no negatives. So they just have a lot of dice. Yeah, I mean, how could they not succeed? But even though it spends seven money to get six, which makes the company look a little stupid, um, <laughs> they do have one writer of their own. So they're going to get one, two money, one for their president for filling one order, one for their writer being the one to do it. And all the company sees is profit, baby. They made 21 this turn. How much did it cost to get there? Uh, maybe a lot, but they don't know that. All right, and that's the presidency of Bengal. Now, if China is open, we'd have a China phase. We don't. Bonuses. And the only bonus we have right now are our shipyards. We've each got two, so that's uh, two money that's open. Oh, so I should say two fitted ones. The Neptune over here on this shipyard isn't out in the ocean yet, so it isn't giving them any money. Then we go to an important phase, revenue, but things are almost done. So first, we got to pay all our expenses. We're going to pay one money for each debt we've taken, one money for each uh, army, each regiment, and one money for each ship. So it's four ships, three regiments, that's seven, and one debt, that's eight. And that's why as it keeps on going up, it gets harder to uh, have the company stay solvent. So our 21 loses eight down to 13. That's actually, that's pretty good. And now we see how the company standing does. If it gets all the way down to here, the company fails and the game ends early. But we're seeing how our current money, which is 13, compares to what they expected, which is 10. So we had more than expectations. Boom, the company is stronger. And that makes it even more unlikely that we'll uh, go uh, insolvent in five rounds. Now, you do go down if you lose regions, which could happen in a second when we get to the events. Hopefully not. And also, if during revenue you can't pay for like what you need to for your armies and everything, then you take out emergency loans, which mess up your standing even more. Although in the initial 1710 scenario, you start with a law called Royal Protection that basically lets you ignore uh, having to pay emergency loans once if you just kind of totally mess up a turn. All right, one more choice to make. Do I want to pay out dividends, this is the end of the revenue phase, to our court? For each dividend I pay out, I decrease the company's money by one per court member, including the chairman. So that'd be six right now, take us down to seven. But then they would each earn one money. So that'd be two for my opponent, but four for me. I'm not going to do two dividends. I don't want the company to fall apart completely, but I'll pay out one. Four money is good. All right, now the intense phase of randomness events in India. So we've got this stack of event tiles, and uh, the top thing matters because, number one, they do have a guide that I never look at because I'm not good at the game yet that tells you what it could possibly be, like what the Bengal events could possibly be. But also when you flip over the event, which we'll get to in a second, the next one tells you where it's going to happen. So it'll be like, oh, unrest in Delhi, or what's I'm going to call it, in Punjab. But we don't get to the cars until we get to the chunky weather die. So uh, two things this is going to do. It's going to show us which uh, ships are in danger of sinking. We really don't want the West because that's where all our ships are. And there's even one, where is it, that has every sea zone is dangerous. But also you have a number, which is going to show you how many event tiles you have to flip. All right, here we go. 
Oh, crud. Only one event, but every ship's area. So we roll once for each ship. On a one to two, it's fine. On a three to four, it flips. If that ever happens again, it's destroyed and it goes back to the shipyard. So it can be rebuilt. It's not uh, the end of the world. And if you get a five or six, it's just gone. So the fortitude, uh, this is mine. You butts. All right. And the Lady Flora, that's theirs. Oh, my gosh. Okay. And the Union, that's theirs. What? Okay. I need to roll a different die here. Uh, okay. The Walpole, that's mine. Okay. Jeez. What? The heck, man. Um, things are not looking good for us making some money for the company next turn. I wish I hadn't done the dividends. But hey, only one event. Let's see what it is. Okay, um, a leader. Leader in Delhi. So it's either going to make Delhi stronger or they're going to rebel if they're dominated by another country. But indeed, they are not. They have the big flag, which means they are actually the ruler of the other two regions near them. Now, the elephant is still threatening to go in there and have this region rebel against them, but now they're tied in strength, so it's all going to come up to uh, when you flip a card for the uh, elephant to like cause an invasion or rebellion, it'll have a modifier to the attack, so anything could happen over here. All right, almost there, everybody. Parliament meets. We got to do some voting. So the uh, AI ended up with the prime minister in this freaky wheel, and this is uh, where it always starts for the 1710 scenario. And you got this big deck of vote cards, and the prime minister can flip up to three, but if they flip a red card that's called a dilemma, they have to take that one. Otherwise, they can pick one of the ones they flipped. But when the AI is the prime minister, they tell us they're going to go for the second card. Uh, here, it would mean the middle card for the London thing, and then the second card for the vote. But first, we're going to do what's called a climate shift to maybe change them off of the peacocks. We're going to roll these dice, and we're looking at how many successes and how many failures or catastrophic failures they got. So one success, five failures. And first, they see if the number of successes is greater than company standing. If it is, it's going to push their climate to the right, although they're already on the rightmost spot, the uh, peacock. So they rolled one success, and this is zero, one, two, three, four, five. So no, they're definitely not more than the company standing. But then they had five failures, and if that's less than or equal to the company standing, they're going to shift their climate left. So yeah, it's on a five, so it's equal. And if it was less than instead of equal, they would shift twice. So they're going to be bears instead of peacocks. I don't know what the heck that means, but cool. All right, now, like we said, they're going to flip to the second card, unless, oh, well, it was a dilemma, so they were going to stop there anyway. Masses demand franchise. All right, so there's a few things here. This is the starting vote value, so it's going to start one in favor, plus is uh, favor, minus is opposed. This shows which space they're going to have to rotate the little uh, hand on the prime minister. Let me show you that. So they get to pick either the clockwise or counterclockwise space uh, that matches the hat symbol in this case. So either way, it's going to be a tax and a window tax. A tax on however many of the social cards uh, icons they have, which neither of us has any right now. And a tax on windows, which neither of us has any of right now. So it doesn't really matter. And they would uh, rotate it toward the one that's going to hurt us the most and hurt them the least. And when it's a tiebreaker, we look here. So that is this way. Okay. So what does this do? It says rotten burrows are now only worth one vote each. That's one of the cards you can get when you retire somebody. There's actually one up here. It'd usually be worth three votes. So that's a pretty big thing. And then it says each vote now costs $2 instead of one. Uh, besides using your shipyards and stuff for votes, you can also spend money for votes. Now, the crown always votes first. And you just check which card it is. Uh, masses demand franchise. Okay, so they are against it if they have the most rotten burrows, but neither of us has any. Otherwise, they are for it. Okay, so they're going to vote for it. So it started with one vote. You can keep track of here. Uh, up is positive passing. Down is negative failing. They've got three shipyards, each with one vote. And then whereas we spend money to vote, they just get money based on their uh, wealth. As long as they have at least 15 and they have, gosh, 18, they get four more votes. So one, two, three, four. Now I've got two boats. I could try to oppose them. I guess I could spend, yeah, so my two boats would get it down to six. So then if I spent seven money, I could beat them in the vote. And that would let me become the prime minister. But really, I don't care. So I'll just vote with them. Who cares? So if the vote wins, at first you do the thing that's here. If it had lost, you would go one space adjacent. Uh, the leader of the opposition, the person who uh, had the most votes against it, would become the prime minister, and they would get to pick one of these. But yeah, here it's just a tax that's doing absolutely nothing to us. And then the vote passes, which just means that this uh, goes over there and becomes a permanent rule. And then also because they pass the law as the prime minister, they get one of these tokens for one more power, kind of like the prestige tokens from winning a combat. And hey, we got to upkeep and refresh. Our regiments and officers come back ready to fight again. Any people on orders go back. And that, folks, is one round. Let's, uh, let's do one more. <laughs> I don't think I can survive like a full five rounds. But let's like show you the London season and go things a little bit more quickly. You get to see how a governor works. All right, so first we're doing attrition. Uh-oh. With how many sixes we just rolled for our ships, I'm kind of terrified here. <laughs> so we roll for each uh, position card. Those are the only ones that can suffer attrition. If they get a one or a two, nothing happens. If they get a three or a four... 
They have a fatigue cube put on them, and that's going to be a permanent plus one to future attrition rolls. So like if they rolled a four next time, it would be converted to a five. And if they get a five or a six, they retire. So the card goes back into the available pool, and they're going to have to like assign a new person to it. And the person on that position goes into the pensioners, and that's where you're going to spend money to retire them and get victory points and all that fun. So in a way, it's terrible to have people retire, but in a way, it's great because it gets you victory points. It gets you those London cards because you need to have people retire to get those. All right, so let's see. Manager of shipping. <laughs> okay, bye. All right, a military affairs. Dude, what is this? Okay, geez. Okay, I'm going to switch out dice, but hey, we'll let it happen. All right, new die. President of Madras. He's fine. President of Bengal. Fine. Okay, now me. Now the chairman always gets a plus one to their role because it's stressful to be in charge, which means, ooh, not even a fatigue. All right. Director of trade. No, I need you. I need you. Oh, okay. He's all right. He just gets a fatigue. And then President of Bombay. Come on, don't leave. We need to make some money. Gosh, no. There was so many retirements, everybody. All right, so we have the vacant offices over here. We'll get to those in hiring in a second. But starting with the person who's closest to the chairman, we're going to retire our people. So they can go to any of these places. The cost in purple is how much you spend. The cost in white is a recurring cost. You have to spend every round, so that's not great. But these are how many victory points you get, but you also see they have increasing numbers of windows. And uh, you saw with the little voting thing that many of the tax results will also tax windows. That would cost you one for every window you own. Now, important thing is anyone who pays to put at least one of their people over here is going to get to take one of these London season cards. But whoever pays the most chooses first. But now the funny thing is their preference is the middle card, which is a Rotten Borough, which is down to only one vote. Although it's still a hat card, which is currently at the highest spot on the power thing. So that'll get them two power at the end of the game. All right, so let's see how much money do I have. I've got 17, but it seems crazy to like splash that already. And they've got 18, but I don't think they're going to spend. Actually, yeah, I wonder if I go to the eight, maybe I'll beat them. But it's two money every turn and two windows, but four victory points. Uh I get this go cheap. I, I kind of want the spouse, actually. Um, all right, whatever. We'll pay eight. And I get four victory points. All right, so they go one person at a time, and they retire them to the best place they can, paying no more than up to half of their treasury. And again, they have 10, 15, 17, 18. So they're going to retire the first person to the same place I did, spending eight. And also getting four victory points. And now they're down to 10 exactly. So they'll retire the second person to the four spot, getting two more victory points. And then because they spent 12 money, they're going to get to take the Rotten Burrow first. And I can take the Blackmail card. I'm allowed to look at it, but it would be hidden from like actual other players. So sometimes it will give you free power. So this is just two power to get the victory points at the end. But then it also gives you an option to play. Play when taken from the display or anytime after the revenue phase on a turn to force any office that is not president or governor to vacate their office without retirement. It's pretty awesome. But this spouse is pretty great too. It's somebody you're marrying into with your family. You can't get rid of spouses. And they generally have negatives, so this one lets me never enlist officers again, except through a free action. But it's worth two victory points, and it makes every retirement cost one less. So this would be seven. This would be three. That's great. So yeah, even though it's a negative, I'm going to take them. And that ties up the victory points. Wahaha. And now we go into the family phase. I am once again first. And there's a lot of vacancies that I want to hopefully fill, so I'm going to enlist a writer. And there's a vacancy in both the presidency of Bombay and the governorship of Bombay, so let's uh, double up there. Then the crown takes their double action, but first they check if they get any free writer placements, and they do get one if there's at least four vacancies, which currently there is. Manager of shipping, military affairs, presidency of Bombay, and the new governorship are all vacant. And their first preference is to go into a presidency where they don't have a writer, so they can hopefully take one of those spots. And then they would get another free placement if there were any presidencies with no crown writers, but they have one now, so that's not happening. And then they still do their regular two actions. So they're going to do another military officer and buy one of the hats. They're buying a hat. So that's uh, two more victory points as long as they have this. But they are broke. Uh, they only have two money left. All right, we skip firms. Now we're going to actually see how hiring works because we have a lot of vacancies. So we look at the backs of the cards and we go in order. So manager of shipping is chosen by the chairman and any candidate is any writer. Remember, this is the one that brings out boats. Now, I only have one boat left to bring out, and they have a ton, so I don't really matter if it's them instead of me. And there's a rule in the game called nepotism, which means you can't appoint somebody from your family unless there's no other options or unless uh, everyone else from those families agrees. Now, for the crown, I have to give them two cubes for them to let me use nepotism, and then I'm required to let them use nepotism, but I get two cubes as long as they have at least two cubes to give. But if I hire a crown family when one of mine was an option, then I get one cube. And oh, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it just be nice if I got rid of that writer that they just uh, threatened me with here? Ha ha ha. Oh, I forgot they have a writer over in Bengal from the order they did. So sure, you can become the manager of shipping. Give me a cube. You're welcome. Okay, next is military affairs. It's chosen by the chairman. And we can consider commanders. Oh man, we have to take a commander away? 
And again, I don't really mind too much, although I guess they can like move my regiments around, but they seem to like kind of keep them where I wanted them anyway. So yeah, whatever. We'll just move their army of Bengal. But I could have picked myself again, even though nepotism would have stopped me. So I'll get another cube. I've got a seven out of 12 right now. So that's good. But they're right back where they started, but they have gotten something from it and weakened some of their other positions. That's good. All right, now the president of Bombay. Ooh, chosen by the director of trade. Consider writers and governors associated with this presidency. Oh man, if only there were other writers to pick from. Sorry, I guess I'm the president again. And there's not even any nepotism because that's literally the only choice. All right, now the governor of Bombay. Ooh, it's chosen by the president of Bombay. Hey, that's me. Oh no, and it's writers and officers in this presidency. Oh, it's just like I planned this. So ha ha ha. We have no more writers, but we are now the governorship and the president of Bombay still ready to make the money roll. And now there is a vacant commander, but that's actually filled by military affairs at the end of their turn. So that's not going to happen yet. And I'm pretty sure it comes from officers. So it'll be uh, one of these people probably. All right, time for the chairman phase. We need some money. And I do have to give them back a cube because I'm still the chairman. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. So we've got seven money to spend plus any loans we take out. I definitely want some ships back, like, <laughs> immediately. Uh, three for mine, if I give them some favor to pick mine. Let's get at least three more. So that's uh, three of my seven, and that might be enough. Oh, no, I think we need just more money. Okay, let's give them three more again. Try to get one of my ships and one of theirs. We can do it. Okay, now the presidency is Bombay doesn't necessarily need to go to war, although they could, and yeah, they've got three people, so it shouldn't even be too hard. I mean, if they had three money to hire the Sikhs again, that'd be great. So let's certainly take out at least one loan. Oh, by the way, I should have gotten uh, one cube for helping out the shipping because I gave them six money and it's four when it's a bear. All right, see, so if I want to get the Sikhs, that'd be three. And then I would want like another probably four money to uh, do the trade action potentially. That leaves nothing left though. Ah, I don't want, I don't want the country to go broke. All right, so crud, I'll take out a second loan and give all five to Bengal. I'm not going to have enough ships to do much, though. Ah, ah, fine. I'll give five to Bengal, get another cube to make sure I can, like, put the ships where I want them to be. Maybe it'll help Bengal invade or something. All right, Director of Trade. I didn't give them any money to open up uh, orders, but really nothing's closed I need right now, so that's fine. So they can just transfer some riders and some ships. And you know what? I don't want them to be, like, putting ships in dumb places. So what if, yeah, you know, let's just give them some money. I I've got things locked down for the moment. Let's transfer both riders to Bombay and help them want to put the ships here. Why not? All right, next you go to manager of shipping. They've got three ships to fit, and they've got enough money to do it. But I'm going to give them one cube back to fit one of mine and two of theirs. Oh, wait, hold on. I almost forgot. I should have a new uh, climate. Crown commanders. There are two. So they're, oh, they're staying bare. Okay, they made it easy. And nice. Worked out perfectly. Their preference when they're bare. I didn't even check it, but I probably should have. Is to place ships in the zone with the most crown riders. Come on in, boys. The water's fine. Oh, we are ready to make some money in Bombay. Okay, then we go to military affairs. So first they can transfer up to two regiments and officers. Then they're going to place the officer in training. And then we'll figure out who's uh, the commander of the army of Bengal. Oh no, they want to steal from an army that I command to an army that they command. I mean, that makes sense. They want to take two of the regiments. I don't mind one, but I don't want two. So I'm going to give them a cube to prevent one of those. It still counts as one of their two transfers. So they'll move one to army of Madras and leave one in Bombay. Okay, next they have to place their new officer in training. Uh, first, they want to create majorities because uh, let's say that we, they got two people here, so they beat me. They would immediately become the commander. Like if you have the most officers in an army, you become the commander automatically. But their preference is to create an equality when they can. Oh, so I guess I did get a unit anyway. So now um, we're tied. If they get like one more officer like this one in, although I think they're about to become the commander, they could take over the Bombay army. And yeah, they're just going to pick officers. Clearly they have majorities, so they become the army of Bengal commander. That's fine. I mean, Bengal probably, uh, they might attack. We'll see what happens. All right, next is a big one, Bombay. So now we have a governor. We can do the governor first, or we can do uh, army attacks first, or we can do the trading first. And let's be like the AI and do the governor first. So how governors work. They get a certain number of dice, which is three here. Uh, they can roll as many times as they want, but each time they really have to take away one die. And each time they fail a test, they put a cube in their uh, home region, which is going to make it easier for rebellions to succeed or for enemies to come invade. And of course, if they catastrophically fail, then they could kick the heck out. But if they succeed, they get one money or two if they failed on the previous roll. And then if they succeed, they can either add two money to the company balance or this presidency. Uh, if they can only do that once per turn. If they keep on doing it, then they start adding unrest for taxing too much. Or they can add a regiment to the matching army. Or they can start building a company boat. It goes on Bombay. And if they succeed at that again, it actually goes out into the ocean. And company boats are immune to storms, so they stick around. All right, well, three dice certainly seems fine. I don't think I'll go for two, but let's see what happens. Okay, success. So I get one money from a family. 
Uh, do I want to add money? Do I want to get another regiment? Well, regiments cost money every round during revenue. The shipping on Bombay wouldn't cost money, but if it goes out, we got a lot of ships. You know, I'm just going to add two money to the company coffers and make it more likely that the company keeps on succeeding because I'm feeling pretty good about how things are going. All right, now let's do some deployment. So I want to invade here. You only got one defense and it would open up uh, the spot here and a seven loot reward. Wow. I'd love to conquer the empire, but they're way too strong. <laughs> All right, so one strength that's minus one. So yeah, I think I'm going to spend three money like planned to uh, recruit the Sikhs again. And then I'll use them. So that's two, three, four. Do I want to use the officer? It's just going to get them money. And they're pretty poor right now. I like to keep it that way. Four is probably enough, right? That would give me three dice. I mean, we'll hope. Uh, let's hope I didn't make a terrible mistake not bringing them in. So again, four dice minus one for the tower is three. Please, please succeed. Yes! All right, so we open up everything. Ooh, a seven. Oh, wait a second. Can we even go here? That is not adjacent to us. Why well, just checked and it says share is a border, not um, share is like a trade route. So I guess we can. All right, so we defeated them. We killed one tower, which gets me one trophy. And it's four money for the tower plus a $7 prize. That's 11. And that'll be a new governorship. And that goes in the Bombay box to show that this is all part of Bombay's territory and not Madras and Bengal. All right, and 11. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so I'm getting three money. Excellent, excellent. We could deploy again with just him just to try to get him killed, but that's okay. And any people you keep behind can help you defend if you get attacked. I mean, not that we'd have too much chance here, but technically it works. Oh, let's not forget our little governorship for later. And this little trade good next to it, if you uh, control areas with those, the best one is Bengal. They let you, if you establish the uh, little China thing through the director of trade, they let you get a ton of money from China trade. All right, and finally, let's go for the big boy. Four ships ready to make us some money. What'd I say? Four money? We're going to spend it all. Uh, hmm. One, two, three, four, I guess. Would it make us more money to go one, two, three? I mean, that, that would make us more money, but it'd be going to three regions. Nah, that's not going to work. All right, we'll do one extra region going to Punjab again. So we're only going to roll three dice. Oh, we make it. It's like a 70% chance with three dice. Come on, man. Just, oh, that two, thank God. All right, so we can do a four. Let's go ahead and put out the crown's writers. And then two basic ones. So what is that? Uh, it's 10 for Bombay plus seven, 17. I'm not sure we'll get to the highs we did last time, but it's good. And I filled four orders, so four money from me, but the crown gets two. The nice thing is replacing two crown uh, writers. I get two cues. I'm up to eight. I mean, hey, it was only two money, y'all. You're, you're cool. All right, that's it. Let's go to Madras. So first they're going to try to deploy. They have uh, one regiment, so one army strength. So I doubt they'll do anything. Yeah, the bear also wants two plus strength, so nope. And then they won't trade unless they have at least five. So it's another nope. They're just keeping their little bit of money here. Uh, but we go to Bengal. Oh, and they don't have any boats to trade with. That's right. We pulled them all into Bombay. So we're definitely not getting any more money. And they also have zero tax strength. So yeah, nothing uh, much going on. That's, I don't know if that's good. That, that sea, like, devastation <laughs> messed up our funds a lot. All right, so we go to China, nothing. Bonuses. We're getting two money. They're getting three. Oh, no, uh, we're getting two, and they're getting two again because one of their ships is not fitted. All right, now we go into revenue. I don't think the company's going to be too happy. Uh, oh, gosh, three debts. Uh, still three armies. So that's six. Still four ships. So that's ten. Yeah, we are not meeting expectations this time. We're down to nine. And they expected us to make 12. Okay, so we go back down to the 10 thing, getting closer to sol uh, insolvency. Oh, whoops, we're on turn two, aren't we? We need to get some people to try to get on the court to get more company debt gone. And now I can pay out dividends again. I am terrified to do so. So no, <laughs> we'll just let it go. And I just have a feeling that the storm die is going to kill the West. Like, I just think it's going to happen. Oh, nope, the East and only two events. That was actually pretty chill. Let's see what we got this time. Oh, here we go. The resolve crisis. So this means the elephant is going to do something. I haven't talked about the elephant much, but it's a fun little mini. And uh, wherever their tail is pointing, that's where like they're attacking from. Wherever it's pointing, that's where they're attacking to. So, and it depends on what it is. Like if it's an empire, which has a big flag, like if it was pointing towards Bengal, they'd try to conquer Bengal and put them under their empire. If it's in this case where a subsidiary of the empire is pointing towards the empire, they're going to try to rebel away. If it was uh, pointing towards us, they invade us. If it's in the middle, they try to have like a uh, self-rebellion when we're controlling them. But yeah, see here, this is super interesting. They have plus zero strength, so it's a tie. I got to check the rules and see who wins in a tie. All right, so I checked in a tie. The defender wins, but they do lose one level from their capital. But nothing else really a negative happens. But then after each crisis, the elephant marches. 
And they're marching to whatever is shown, Bengal. And then where's Bengal trying to go? Uh, you look at the card, and it's a triangle. And you find the region that is a triangle. Oh, so they're going to try to invade Delhi. Yeah, good luck, Bengal. <laughs> You've got one strength. They've got one, two, three. Well, actually, if they get a good uh, crisis card, they could make it happen. But that was only the first of two cards, so let's go. Oh, hey, here we go. Yeah, this is not going to succeed. They have plus one strength, which makes them two. But again, you total up the entire empire, which gives them three. Oh, and uh, in this case, they lose something. Oh, so they are ripe for the picking for our armies if we ever <laughs> get around to attacking them. And then now the elephant moves here. And it's a triangle where they want to go. They want to know if they want to attack us in Hyderabad. So that's defended against by the army that controls it, which is Bombay. So we want to keep some units here. They only have one strength, but we saw they get bonuses because otherwise in another event phase, they could come in and kick us out of there. We don't want that. All right, and we're almost done. Round two, Parliament meets. But first we're doing that little six dice change the AI check. Two successes, four failures. Two successes greater than or equal to them? No. Four failures less than or equal than? Yes, just equal. So they're going to move one to the left, which puts them back on Lion. They are never going to get into Bull and Gazelle, are they? Okay, then their current tiebreaker is the third card, unless we get a red. So nope, nope. Okay, ship subsidy. And the boat card says tax at the bottom. By the way, it's going to start with negative three votes, so it's not too popular. So they have to rotate to the first tax. It's a tax on boats or a tax on... Oh, none of us have any of those. They have more boats than we do, so they're going here. And it's not even a window tax, so it's not going to hurt anybody at all. Now, like I said, the card starts with negative three votes. Uh, but, okay, if they are lying, then they agree with ship subsidy. They've got three votes plus one from their messed up borough that got uh, nerfed by the previous law. But they've only got six money, so they only have one more vote automatically from their funds, which means if I just use both my boats to go minus two, and then two money now because of the previous law, I'll pass this. But what the heck does this even do? Okay, it gives an extra action. After taking any family action, you may buy a shipyard. And fitting player ships now cost two for the measure of shipping and for private firms. Ooh, I like this a lot, actually. Actually, do I? Because that'll let them buy shipyards as well. Though I've got more money than they do. But I like the idea of stealing the prime ministership from them and also uh, stopping them from getting another one of those vote pass tokens. So yeah, let's uh, let's spend both of our shipyard votes to get to there. And then let's spend two more money again. It would have been only one, but the masses demand franchise uh, thing messed that up. So two more money. And this bad boy fails. All right, so I become the prime minister and I get to move this to either of these. Oh, and that's a pretty easy one. So that would uh, bonus means you get one dollar for each thing you own. So boom, I have four in the court. They have two. So uh, there we go. It's kind of like I gave dividends without doing dividends. And right, then finally, we would get to upkeep and refresh. So for upkeep, they got to pay three and I've got to pay two. Yikes, look how poor they are. They only got five money. Whereas I have uh, 15. What is that? 15, 19? Oh, it is good to rule Bombay. All right, and even though I'm really enjoying this and we are about to go to the third round out of five in this scenario, let's uh, go ahead and see where uh, things would stand if the game just like somehow magically ended right now and the company exploded. Or let's say the company is where it currently is. All right, so first we'd award the power award. If the game ended in round one, two, or three, it's worth three or three points. Uh, there's a one for second place, but in solo you ignore that. So one of us is getting three or three points and one of us is getting none. So you get power from the powers over here. So each hat you own is worth two. Each uh, stock person you have is worth one. They own two hats. So that's four power. Plus two of these guys. So that's six. I've got four. So they've got a two point lead on me. Six to four. But then remember the prime minister gets two. So now we're tied again. Six to six. They've got one pass loss. So that gives them seven to six. I've got two trophies. That makes me eight to seven. But then they have a hidden blackmail card we never looked at. Oh, no, two power. And that's all you do with their blackmail cards. You can steal them and buy them. But ugh. so that would give them the power. They would get the three victory points. That was big. Of course, the game isn't actually ending yet, but that's what happens now. So that would have pushed them to 11. And then assuming the company survived, we get positive points from these. So I get four, they'd get two. Uh, one, two, three, four, one, two. And then if the company was successful, we could do some final retirements which means we would roll for pensioners again. And if I got at least one, I think I would win because I have so much more money to send people to retirement. So, hey, let's just pretend. Okay, nope, fine. I mean, they're fatigued. Madras, nope. Bengal, okay, so they would uh, retire Bengal. And then chairman with the plus one. Come on, somebody die. Uh, director of trade with a fatigue. No, President of Bombay, help me out. And Governor of Bombay, come on. Yes, okay. All right, so I would retire first. I mean, how much money do I have? Uh, what was it, like 19? Okay, so I would go to the 14th place for eight victory points. And actually, it would only cost me 13 because of my spouse. And the best they could do would be the fourth place for two. So that'd be eight for me. 
two for them. Okay, so my huge money advantage with retirement would have given me the win there, although only because I got somebody to actually retire. But that would be if the game had suddenly ended. Clearly, I think we would have gone at least a few more rounds. The company was not doing that badly. But apart from uh, the deregulation and firm rules, which are optional things that I haven't tried yet, those are the basics of the game. And uh, two rounds out of uh, potentially five. Again, the game can end early. Now, I'm not going to do a review of this one for a while. I want to play it more solo. I want to play it multiplayer to get like a feel for how that is. But I am enjoying it. It's a lot to run. It's a lot to look at with the solo book. But the stuff that happens is very cool. So I hope you enjoyed that video, everybody. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.